things I like about tuna diving is the unknown. You jump in off the boat, take one breath, and immediately start kicking down. Sometimes when you make the drop, the fish aren't there. Sometimes the fish are 50 yards to the left, sometimes the fish are 50 yards to the right. You might see them, you might not. So sometimes you end up taking multiple drops, jumping in, jumping out of the boat. Every once in a while, you'll jump in and then all your dreams come true. You end up getting walled by massive, massive schools of tuna. Nikki was able to get a shot off and it stuck and landed. This was one of her nicer fish. I think it ended up going close to 90 pounds. And of course, the thing everyone loves to see, the tombstone. It's exciting. I mean, from the time that you jump in off the moving boat, you jump in, you see the school of dolphin, you see the tuna, you land the shot, you fight the fish, eventually you get the fish high enough up so that you can go ahead and take a second shot. See how he's turning you? Hey, hey, see how he's turning you? Don't let him turn you. Keep one direction. Cooper, Cooper, try to stay out of this line. Hey, get ready to follow me. I'm gonna do a second shot. So you just heard me talking about staying out of the line. Don't let the fish turn you in a circle. Keep swimming in a single line, right? This is all line management skills. This is something that's super important if you're gonna end up landing a nice fish especially when you're talking about these tunas, when they burst, they can take you down no problem. So getting tangled in line is the worst thing that could happen. When you're fighting that fish, sometimes you don't realize what the excess line is doing. For me, I just like to keep swimming in one direction. And as I swim in that one direction, I keep pulling line and pulling it behind me. So here you can see Nikki with her big fish, like I said, 80, 90 pounds, not sure we didn't really weigh it. Here you can see what the chaos looks like. Bunch of birds hitting. It's seriously a National Geographic moment, right? You got the birds hitting the balls. You can see the tuna rushing through. The dolphins are right behind them. Sometimes the tunas are mixed in with the dolphins, right? I mean, this is this is one of those experiences that you will talk about. There's tuna everywhere. Yo, there's tuna everywhere. That was awesome, right? These are my, my good friends, Cooper and Nikki. I dive with them multiple times a year all over the place. And they let me take a shot. I was able to connect right off the bat, right? I, I get one drop, one shot, boom, got a tuna. And this is one of those things I love seeing, right? You just get to swim up with the gun, let the fish take off. You got the float, the buoy's going. That's the feeling you want. When you look up and you see that buoy standing upright with tons of tension on the line, it feels amazing. Cooper has gone out multiple times looking for tuna. He's been on boats where other people have landed tuna, just he hadn't gotten a tuna yet for himself. So for me, it was really shocking to see that he ended up not taking a shot on these fish because he was just really being a selective hunter. He wanted his first tuna to be a larger grade fish and none of these fish were fish that he wanted. It's 
really awesome to see that he's taking a selective approach, right? He's not going to take just any fish. Just because he has an opportunity doesn't mean he has to take that fish, right? Picking out the fish that he wants, that's going to be a much more meaningful dive and a much more meaningful harvest. You can see there's just fish everywhere. Finally, after a couple drops, Cooper decides he's gonna take a shot and he nails this tuna. And as soon as he hits it, it starts swimming up to the surface. So he probably nicked the spine. One of the things I got concerned about was seeing as the tuna was swimming closer to Nikki, and Nikki's heading to the surface. It looks like she's in trouble. Malachi looks like he's gonna help her. And I'm looking at her, I'm telling her, breathe, you gotta breathe. And then I see her head drop below the surface for a second. So I speed over there even faster and I hold her up, right? And I'm like, hey, are you okay? And you know, obviously she tells me she's fine. And she's immediately more stoked about the fact that Cooper has a fish, right? So it was Malachi leaves and he goes and checks on Cooper. I'm still sitting here holding on to Nikki. One of the things that people make a mistake of is the person hits the surface, they say they're fine, they leave them, right? Well, in this scenario, I wanted to make sure that not only was Nikki okay, but she had fully recovered before I left her side. As usual with most tuna, you have to put a second shot. A lot of people rush the second shot and they don't make it perfect, and that only creates a nightmare. You really wanna make sure you wait and get that perfect shot. For me, I like the uppercut. From the bottom of that throat up through the top of the skull, for me, seems to be the winning punch every single time. They bleed out like crazy if you don't happen to hit them in the brain, but most of the time, that's gonna give you an awesome shot and it's gonna end the fight. One of the things we do to keep the fish as fresh as possible is we actually start filleting the fish right on the boat. So it's tradition to eat the heart of your first tuna. So now that Cooper finally landed his first yellowfin tuna, we had to make him eat it. And I'm not surprised that he eats it and doesn't even look like it's gross, right? Some people will eat tuna heart and make all kinds of faces. It looked like Cooper might have asked for a second or third heart to eat. switch gears and we move over and do some reef diving right after doing a full day of tuna we ended up with five tuna so we don't need more than that plenty to go home with we decided to switch over do some reef diving the viz was a little milky so that was frustrating right we were clean on the top but as soon as we got to depth around 60 foot it turned into that white milk which becomes very difficult nikki was done diving for the day she had just finished having uh, what looked like a, a tough a tough return to the surface. Of course, one of the things I want you to notice here is how aware she is of her body. So Nikki is actually aware that she's not feeling good and she actually gives me the signal, hey, I'm not doing good on her ascent. And I'm able to take the gun from her and help her to the surface. So eventually, after taking many drops, Cooper and Nikki said, hey, CJ, why don't you take a drop? And I went down and landed a terrible shot. I ended up hitting this Kubera in the tail, but I fought it for a long time, didn't make any progress, so Cooper came down to get the line from me. As soon as I gave Cooper the line, Nikki helped me to the surface, and as soon as I'm on the surface and I'm good to go, uh, she actually comes right back down to help Cooper and as soon as her and Cooper hit the surface, I'm right there on the line, right? So Cooper's been fighting that fish for me. I'm now pulling up on the line. I look over, I make sure, hey, are you okay, Coop? He looks at me, he's like, oh yeah, we got it. We got a big one, right? So I'm amped up about this. This is 
pure chaos, right? So I got to give Malachi a good, good shout out here. Thank you for getting all this on film, right? There's a lot going on, but as I'm pulling this up, I'm realizing we should probably get a second shot because I hit it in the tail. I'm not sure how good it's holding. We just been pulling and fighting on this fish forever. You can see here the line management is so important. As I swim forward, I'm constantly pulling that extra line behind me, right? And swimming in that one direction. That's how you keep that line away from you and keep you safe. Nikki makes a drop down and you really can't ask for a better second shot. She puts it right through the head, doesn't waste any meat, unlike my first shot, right? Wasting some of that back tail meat. But she hits it right in the head, comes out the lip on the other side, this was ended up being a 50 pound Kubera. So that was the winning fish of the of the reef. Yeah, excellent shot. I mean, right through the eyeball. Still alive, but that fish is secured. And now once we know the fish is secured at the surface, you can see we're doing a little bit of celebrating, but still not over. You gotta make sure you put the knife in it and the fight properly there with us on this second day. And he was watching from the surface and. As soon as we hit the surface with this big fish, he told us, he was like, guys, that's a real one. So that ended up being the highlight of the reef. I mean, the viz was pretty bad at depth. I mean, it murked out right at 60 and I got very lucky that this fish poked its head out. I think I was at like 65, maybe 70 foot when I pulled the trigger on this fish. I could barely see the fish. I remember seeing the fish right before it hit the murk. And as the fish hit the mark I took a shot of where I thought the fish was going and I ended up hitting it in the tail so extremely lucky to get a shot off on this fish extremely lucky that the shot held on this fish and I'm extremely lucky that I had a group of divers I know how to work together as a team you hear people talking about I want to dive alone well here's an example where three divers worked flawlessly together so you can see here the filleting the tuna some of the smaller tuna looks really good. It really does. A lot of people say the bigger tunas are better, but I really like those medium range tunas. So you get the really nice color. You can see where there's a little bit of burn, right? It's a different color. It's, uh, it's a white and opaque. That's from lactic acid buildup, right? The fish get hot and use a ton of energy and uh, during the fight and, and so that's one of the things that you'll notice is you can see that they get some of that burn that's no big deal you can eat it there's nothing wrong with it but when you're doing sushi grade and it's about presentation i just trim that part off. if you like the voiceovers or you don't like the voiceovers comment below let me know your thoughts if you really liked it subscribe and share with your friends thanks for watching we'll see you next week for episode four